So as we continue on with our evening, I have the privilege of now introducing to you our next speaker, Father Wilbert Chin John. He is our second twin and pastor at St. Bonaventure Parish. Father Wilbert was also ordained on June 18, 2004, and I have to confess I'm convinced that without him, Father James would be lost. It's Father Wilbert who keeps track of the shenanigans and tomfoolery and keeps Father James in check. <laughs> so when I asked Father Wilbert the question, think of an extraordinary woman who has affected your life. Who is she and why has she been important to you? He responded by saying, aside from the Blessed Mother, my mother and my sister, the woman who has had a great impact on my life is my godmother, Vida. She catechized after school for years and led me to my first confession, communion, and taught me adoration, the rosary, and other prayers. She is also one of God's servants who led me to the priesthood. I will forever be indebted to her. To her. Okay, so I have to say, Father Wilbert's my favorite, because who else knows to surround themselves with great women, right? Like, <laughs> ladies, way to go, Father Wilbert. So now I'd like to invite Father Wilbert to come and speak on the topic, the cult of Mary, venerate or adore. I'm happy to announce that tonight we've gone global. My two friends from Enchant, Alberta are here. <laughs> It, Enchant is in South um, Alberta, two hours drive from here, and there's like 47 people there. Tonight there's 45, because it's you that are here. Welcome. The acts of piety and honor given to the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Catholic Church often grabs the attention of many non-Catholics, and even of some Catholics alike, and raises the question whether we have remained faithful to the command of Jesus Worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. Do we venerate Mary or adore her? Of course, to us Catholics who have a devotion to Mary, we know full well that to God alone belongs adoration, all adoration, and we serve only Him. We do not adore Mary, we venerate her. We honor her because of who she is in God and who she is to God. And as a result, who she is to us and who we are to her. To those who do not have this affiliation to Mary, however, witnessing how much Catholics love and honor Mary, they may not comprehend our veneration to Mary, which may be misconstrued as either taking the place away from Christ or diminishing the fullness of attention reserved to God alone. The basis of the opposition of non-Catholics to our veneration to Mary can come from different fronts. I will not be able to cover all of them with this talk. Instead, I would like to focus on a particular front, which I discovered surfing the internet and having Googled why Catholics adore Mary. By Googling in this way, I was able to find non-Catholic internet forums that propagate the idea that we Catholics adore Mary and therefore have been idolatrous. It is interesting to find that the Holy Father, Pope Pius XII himself, was quoted to have written the following statement in his encyclical issued in 1953, Fulgen's Corona, which proclaimed the centenary of the definition of the dogma and the Immaculate Conception. On paragraph 18 of the said document, Pope Pius XII was expressing delight that it's been a hundred years since Pope Pius IX solemnly proclaimed the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, which was not only grounded in sacred scriptures, but also in the tradition of the Church as handed down by the Church Fathers. Then he started to use Pope Pius IX's own words, quoting him, There is nothing more sweet nothing dearer than to worship, venerate, invoke, and praise with ardent affection the Mother of God conceived without stain of original sin. Notice the use of the word worship. 
Now, what is more interesting is that I could not find the word worship in the papal bull issued by Pope Pius IX on the name after conception. Pope Pius XII seems to have added this word. Nevertheless, the issue here for non-Catholics involved in the discussion of the cult of Mary is that Pope Pius XII himself used the word worship. From the outside, it is shocking for anyone to hear that the Church promotes the worship of Mary. People who are already suspicious of Catholics would certainly begin to question even more the Church's teachings and practices. So you can imagine the people saying, see, that's what I told you of Catholics. <laughs> However, calm down and hold your horses. <laughs> Let us look at the word worship. In today's time, we only know of one definition of the word worship, and that is the feeling or expression of adoration and reverence toward a deity. In Christianity, we understand that worship belongs only to God as the highest form of adoration and praise. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's rather incomplete. Before I expound on the degrees of worship, I would like to point out that we even have a secular use of the word worship. In addressing an important and high-ranking person, for example, mainly British in usage, one addresses the mayor as his worship or your worship. His Worship, Mayor Nancy, Nancy. <laughs> a salutation of reverence towards a person of office. Now going back to the religious context, however, of the word, worship has three varying degrees. The first definition of the word worship is the superior, absolute, supreme worship of adoration due to God alone. The highest kind of worship reserved only to the most holy trinity is called Latria, and that can only be given to God. The second kind of worship is called Dulia. This kind of worship is addressed indirectly to God through the veneration of the reflection of God's work in the lives of martyrs, angels, and saints. It honors creatures of God and venerates the servants of God for their exemplary lives of holiness, dulia. <clears throat> the third and final one, most appropriate to the Blessed Mother, is called the worship of hyperdulia. Since Mary is above all saints and angels, as one conceived without sin, the Mother of God, this is the highest form of reverence given only to her. This honor is afforded to the Blessed Mother due to the honor that is fitting of her who conceived the Son of God. This honor given to her is associated with and to the Son of God. Having known the three degrees of worship, one need not be alarmed with Pope Pius XII's use of the word worship in his encyclical. It is clear to us Catholics that adoration is due only to the persons of the Trinity, to the Most Holy Trinity. But the highest form of veneration belongs to Mary, Mother of God. <coughs> then, we also honor the servants of God. Now, I would not encourage that we use the word worship whenever we refer to Mary, because it will, I know it will just create a lot of misunderstanding. And since we only know of one definition of that word in this day and age, we'd rather not use that word. But, when you read the document, when you hear somebody use that word, to not be alarmed and to go back to the three levels of worship. We instead use the word venerate. But if you want to sound fancy, you may of course use the words hyperdulia, cultus hyperdulia. <laughs> or not. Yes. I'm okay with that too. Pope Pius XII in the same encyclical tells us that any honor and veneration given to our Heavenly Mother does not diminish our adoration of God because all gifts, even the highest, flow from Him as from their primary source, but also because the glory of children are their Father's glory. When we honor the creation and gifts of God, 
we adore God even more for His greatness. Our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, because of her role in God's plan and of her special place in the story of salvation in Christ, her Son, is Trinitarian, Christological, and reflective of what it means to be church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. One of the most beautiful Marian prayers that we pray during the season of Easter is the Regina Shelley. The first part gives honor to Our Lady for her role in the gift of salvation. Then the second half of the prayer is addressed to God in gratitude for His work through Mary. So I would like to end my talk with this prayer in English. Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia, for He whom you did merit to bear, Alleluia, has risen as He said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who have been pleased to gladden the world by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we pray, that through his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may receive the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ, our Lord.